This time around we're going to be working on a third gen Toyota pickups four-wheel drive system. Yes, third gen. I know I've said that wrong in previous videos. We're going to be seeing just what exactly makes this front axle tick. So what specifically are we going to be doing? Well, I've got a 3.54 to 1 gear ratio in the rear axle, and I need to swap out the ring and pinion that's in the front axle so that I can actually use this thing off-road and use the four-wheel drive system without the front axle and the rear axle binding against each other. So when I engage the four-wheel drive, the truck likes to kick and fight itself because the rear wheels are spinning faster than the front wheels. So I need to find out if I can actually use the same type of ring and pinion that I've got in the rear axle as the front. Now, if you don't know anything about four-wheel drives, or if you're thinking, well, I work on K5 Blazers all the time, of course you can use the same axle. Well, the thing is, I've got an automatic front differential. I do not have the locking hubs. So because this isn't a manual four-wheel drive, I have these little vacuum lines going here. And that's what allows me to engage the four-wheel drive system off-road without having to get out of the vehicle, get into the mud, flip the hubs, and then get back in, into the vehicle. So it's more of a luxury item. And I'm just curious because I know it has to have a vacuum in order to engage the front differential. I'm trying to figure out, is there anything special that's inside there? Is there anything that's, that makes it do that, that uh, has to be specifically different is there anything that is actually different from the rear differential from the front differential or can i just use the same ring and pinion well that's what we're going to be finding out because that's not information i can find anywhere on the world wide web so i've got to find first-hand knowledge and i have found that the best way to acquire first-hand knowledge about something is to take it apart and I don't like the way my Harbor Freight jack stand is looking, so I'm going to get my jack under here as an extra added safety feature. So previously, my CV joint had gone bad and actually had a bad bearing over here and started to fuse together. So I had to cut that sucker out. So I won't be removing that during this video since it's already removed, but I'm pretty sure in order to get this differential out, you're going to have to remove both CV joints. So since this is the one that I still have in it, I'll be taking this one out. And before I do that, I'm going to follow these vacuum lines with my paint pen. I'm going to mark one line, and then I'm going to mark the hose that goes into the diff. That way, I know which one goes where. Last thing you want to do is hook your vacuum lines up backwards so that your four-wheel drive engages when your two-wheel drive is engaged, and vice versa. Now all I should have to do here is there's six bolts going around. All I should have to do is take my 17 millimeter, catch my impact wrench and loosen them up. But if you're finding it difficult to access some of these nuts, what you can do is come over here with a couple of 14 millimeter wrenches and loosen up your drive shaft. Once you get that off of there, then you can spin the differential freely. Now with all that done, it looks like uh, I should just be able to pull this straight out. Now on that other one, it was all fused and everything because it's got all heated up and welded together. I had to cut the whole thing out of there with a torch, but uh, it looks like you can just pull this out. All right. Makes for installing a new one a hell of a lot easier. So should be able to wiggle that out and get that down out of the way. So now I'm going to remove the differential so I can get a nice good long look at it and disassemble it and figure out what's what. Let's see, we got one long bolt here from the front. We got two in this plate over here. And I'm not seeing any connected over to here, which means we should just have that one in the rear. And back here we got these two bolts. And from this side, we have that one there. Man, what a pain in the ass that was. All right, there it is. The automatic locking vacuum operated front differential in all its glory. So I'm assuming this little plug down here, I'm assuming that's for the uh, little light that's on the dashboard 
A little green light that says four-wheel drive to let you know when it's actually engaged. I don't know that for a fact, but it's the only electronic component that I can see, so it makes sense. But hey, let's crack these 14 mils and see what's inside this Easter egg. And I can't get the last 14 until I get these 412s off. A few whacks with a hammer. Got it to break the seal. And what the hell are we looking at here? Looks like... Looks like somehow... This, when this pulls a vacuum, it looks like what happens is it pulls that over to here. Hmm. And then, God, that's got to be a powerful vacuum in order to pull that, though. And then somehow that slides that over and that causes the differential to lock. I, I guess this is how that works. Relatively simple, but, I mean, that would take... It'll take a lot of force to push that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe a few pounds of force. And then that just somehow slides that little track over and somehow that locks it. Hopefully that's, that's the only thing that's different between the front and the rear axles. And a couple of more taps with the hammer broke the seal on this one. So now the moment of truth. Does it have the same just regular ring and pinion as the rear axle does, or is it completely different? Yeah, looks exactly the same. Looks exactly like the the rear carrier. Just operates differently, I guess. Nice, that's good to know. I can get my 3.54 to 1 uh, ring and pinion set and I can put it right in the sucker and then I'll have a matching four-wheel drive system, front and rear axle. Nice. This, for some reason, it will slide over and then it will actually turn. It will actually turn, uh, there we go. There, is a good representation. So when you're driving along, it's not doing anything. Oh well, yeah, when you're driving along, it's locked onto here. Let's see if I can get it. So it looks like while it's driving along, when this is right here, the four wheel drive is engaged, the, the locking mechanism for the front axle. And then when the vacuum pulls it over, there's no gear teeth on the inside of this one. Yeah, so now it's not wanting to turn at all. But then when you engage your four-wheel drive, your vacuum pushes it to right there. And now it wants to turn. Nice. This has been educational for me. I hope it's been educational for you.